I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And if you're new here, my channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working professional photographer. And today I'm going to be a little bit different. I've got a different scene. I'm going to be a little bit different. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Not in a good mood. Actually, I'm not in a bad mood. But when I thought about this idea for an episode, I wasn't in a great mood. And so today I'm going to sound off about shit that annoys me about the photography industry. And stay tuned until the end if you want to hear me call out some pretty big names in our industry. Whoa, spicy. All right, guys, as always, you know what? Not as always. I'm not even going to sell stuff today because that's not what this episode is about. It's not normally what my episodes are about either. But today, I don't want it to be jaded. I want this to be pure. I woke up this morning pretty early. I'm an early riser anyways, and I just had an idea. I was like, you know what? There's a lot of stuff about the photography industry that kind of annoys me, and I was doing a live stream recently, and a couple of things got brought up, and I was getting a little bit like angry about it, but I usually like am kind of reserved about this stuff because I'm always afraid of like, well, if I say this, it might cost me this kind of work, or people might see it this way, but you know, these are things I have conversations with my friends. These are things that I've thought about. These are things that I believe in. These are things that I just don't think are right, and they annoy me. And I want you guys to know about them because that's just the kind of mood I'm in today. So you guys might notice a new setup here. I know I've been tweaking things a lot. I moved out of my bedroom, so you guys aren't in my bedroom anymore. I've set this live stream area up. This is my workstation. This is my home office. I did a little tour of my home office. Got some new little devices here. Some new. I've been tweaking this for like the last month while I've been getting my kitchen redone. I've been stuck up here, so I've been doing a lot of like playing around. And this is what I came up with. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know. There's going to be a new setup. I've got my fan back there. AC will be coming in pretty soon, I hope. I'm trying to block the fan with my shoulder here. But this is going to be my new setup for a bit. Let me know what you think. And if you don't like it, just keep your mouth shut about it because I don't want to hear it because I'm not changing it for a while. So today I'm going to talk about shit that bothers me about the photography industry. And like I said before, stay tuned until the end because I'm going to call out some pretty harsh names. I'm going to call out a name that I've wanted to sort of mention for a long time, but I've been kind of like be honest, I've been kind of a coward about it. I've been kind of afraid to mention it, but no more. I don't know why. Today, I'm not afraid anymore. So the first thing that annoys me about the photography industry is photo contests. This was brought up in my live stream, and it just got me thinking, and that's actually what sparked this episode, is photo contests bother me. Ever since I was a young student participating in them, sure, they can be beneficial when you're just starting out. Sure, they can be fun just to enter them, but most of the time, they're money grabs. Yes, it would be nice to win a Pulitzer. It would be nice to win a World Press Award, not taking anything away from those competitions or the people that have won them, but most of the contests out there I mean there's just so many they're just so ridiculous and not only are they money grabs they're rights grabs as well if you read the fine print man, most of the time you get nothing from it you might win like your money back from the competition but really most of the time they've got your photo they can use it like as big as they want as long as they want and like wherever they want so read the fine print of these competitions honestly they're gonna benefit much more than you they're gonna say well no we're gonna give you photo credit but really like th that never really benefits you it's gonna have like a tiny byline but no one's gonna look at that or very rarely people actually look at that and another thing is on either side of it don't put too much stock into it I see so many people like don't win the photo competitions where they're young and they get discouraged and it stops them from shooting or they just don't think they're as good as the other people that's not the case I've seen exceptional photographers never win the big competitions and I've seen really mediocre photographers win competitions so many variables to consider sometimes the judges aren't like serious about it sometimes the judges have biases or they're looking for certain things or they're looking for the topic du jour or, you know, oftentimes, to be honest, because I've been a judge and I always put everything I have into it, but I've been a judge for huge competitions, like global competitions, thousands of images. And I see a lot of judges out there, they're not compensated for the time. So they actually, so they don't put a lot of time into the judging. So, so really, like, yes, enter them if you have fun doing so. What I would suggest if you are going to enter photo competitions, look closely at the contract, look closely at what they get to do with your photograph afterwards. I actually entered this competition a couple years ago, big competition, and I won. Like, I forget. I won the category that I entered. I can't even remember the name of the competition. So I, otherwise, I would call it out right now. But I, I'd won the category that I entered in. I think I paid like $30. And then basically, I won nothing. No prize. No money. No nothing. I need my entry fee back. And then they tried to talk me into like paying to be in their book that they're publishing. I'm like, you know what? No. I just wrote back like, no, just don't publish my picture. That's fine. Then they wrote back like, we'll still publish it. You don't have to pay. A lot of them are scams, a lot of them are money grabs, a lot of them are rights grabs, so just be careful. Again, if you're going to enter these competitions, look for the ones that are going to push you to do things. Look for the ones that are more like a challenge-based, like kind of stuff that I used to do where I'm not like charging you guys to do it. Free competitions that force you to go out and work on your craft as a photographer, things like that. The rest of them, or at least most of them, just be very wary about them. 
The next thing that annoys me in the photography industry is copycat photographers. This is something I see all the time. This is something that you can loop back to the award stuff, back to the photo competitions. And I don't actually even hate the copycat photographers. I understand what it's like as an amateur to try to like do other people's shots. And I understand the temptation to be like, well, that shot won the photo competition last year and I can take a similar shot like that. That wasn't that hard. Or worse, I can recreate that shot and make it happen. Who I really blame is the photography industry, the judges, the people that put on these competitions that reward copycat photographers that are too lazy to like actually research and say like, has that shot already been done? Is that just a knockoff of another shot? It happens all the time. I mean, living in Vietnam, geez, I can't tell you like a couple times a year, there's always like, Vietnam photographer wins international award for, and honestly, nine times out of 10, it's like, one of like three shots. It's always like a drone shot of like a fisherman casting out a net and it's like tons of HDR and like worked way too much in Photoshop. Another one that really drives me crazy is like the shot of like, you know, people make incense in Vietnam and it's quite beautiful when they sort of fan out the incense. But when they're making it, this photographer took a shot years ago of like the woman's wearing like the conical hat and the Aozai and she's just surrounded by like just tons of incense and she's by herself. It's so fake, it's so set up, it's so contrived. First of all, the people that work in that industry, they're wearing comfortable clothes, they're wearing pajamas, they're not wearing a traditional dress, they're not wearing a Vietnamese Aozai when they're doing it. That photographer annoys me because that picture is really contrived, but what annoys me even more is the 10 photographers every year that do that same shot and are pretty excited about themselves for doing that shot. And actually what annoys me even more than that is the judges and the competitions that reward these shots every year. It just, it just drives me crazy. I have a friend here, his name is Etienne, he's a photographer. He did a whole rant about photography competitions, a whole blog. I think he did a YouTube episode as well. I'm gonna put a link to his rant about it because it's like much better than mine, it's way deeper. Uh, he's fantastic actually, so check that out. I'll put a link in the description box below if you like that kind of stuff. But he kind of just goes off about photography competitions. It goes off about these sort of set up travel shots which I totally agree with him about. But, you know, just in general, you guys out there as photographers, don't strive to copy, man. Strive, like, learn from other photographers, get influence from other photographers, but strive to become your own photographers. And that kind of just goes for all those cliches in photography, street photography, wedding, travel, all that stuff. You know, it's okay to look at that stuff. It's okay to understand it. It's okay to learn technically how some of these shots were done, but... Aim to learn how they did it, but don't aim to do it. Aim to be yourself as a photographer. Aim to come up with your own original shots that will later on become other people's cliches. That's what you should aim for. The next thing that annoys me about the photography industry, or I don't even know if this would be considered the photography industry, but maybe it is. This is kind of complicated, but I did a whole separate episode about this, so I'm going to keep it kind of short, or maybe not, because I'm in a ranting mood, is YouTube photographers. Now, people say like, what do you mean YouTube photographers? Aren't you a YouTube photographer? No, I don't make the majority of my living from this. I make the majority of my living from doing assignment work, from doing commercial photography, from people paying me to take photographs, which I deliver to them, whether it be a magazine, a newspaper, or early on in my career, delivering them to a wedding client, whatever. That's what I'm talking about. That's the difference. I consider that a professional photographer. I'm not knocking YouTube photographers for what they do, they do it well. Many of them do it better than me. They've had way more cuts and animations at this point in their video and, and have way more followers than I do and way more subscribers and all that kind of stuff. Fine, not knocking them for doing that, but a lot of them kind of claim to be professional photographers. You know, they title themselves. They don't title themselves as a YouTuber, they title themselves as a photographer. You know, if they title themselves as a content creator, that's different, but they. They kind of mislead, that's what I'm getting at. A lot of them sort of pretend like they make a living off photography and most of them really never have. So why does that annoy me? Well, it doesn't annoy me that they make a living off of doing this. I think that's fine, I think it's great. I'm all about the hustle, whatever you can do to make a living. What annoys me is when they kind of give advice to photographers out there who want to make a living off of photography, you know what I mean? Like they don't want to make a living off of being a YouTube photographer, they want to make a living off of taking pictures for clients, and these people give advice on that, but they don't have that experience. They never worked with clients, at least not at a high level, and at least not often. So like they're giving advice about gear. Again, if you're looking for gear for your YouTube studio, fine, talk to them. If you're looking for gear to go out and shoot a story, go shoot a documentary, go shoot a commercial gig, they're not the people because they haven't used that equipment in that in that way. You could say they're good storytellers. Yeah, some of them are really good storytellers. Some of them are good filmmakers, but most of the time they're good storytellers or good filmmakers about their own life. Again, they haven't had to do it in a client situation. They haven't had to do it in a professional situation. Maybe professional is not the right word, but they haven't had to do it in that situation. You know what I mean? Like they haven't gone out and done an assignment. So if you want to be an assignment photographer, a wedding photographer, run your own photography studio, portraits, weddings, whatever you're doing out there, 
listen to other photographers that are doing that or have done that. You know, the ones that are YouTubers that have grown into that or still have a successful business, some do both. Most of the big names really have never done it professionally at that level. So it's just a warning out there. Just be careful of who you listen to. A lot of them like to mislead. A lot of them like to make it sound like they're storytellers or documentary photographers. But again, the only thing that most of them have documented is themselves and their own lives. That's just different. It's different than being a documentary photographer. It's different than being a photojournalist. The next thing that annoys me about the photography industry, and this is just like a pet peeve of mine, something I've noticed for years, something I've wanted to talk about. I've sort of had side conversations with friends about it, but I never really like went off about it publicly. It's the fact that like camera companies, when they release like a new camera or new lens, why are they always like terrible pictures? I mean, they work with some of the best photographers in the world and they're always like really horrible pictures. I've been to a lot of these launch events. I used to work with Canon quite extensively. Like I did my own TV show with Canon. I was the host of his show for five years. I've been to these events with thousands of people, like I said, judging these competitions on TV and in-person competitions and things like that. And they, whenever they do these launch parties or releases on their website or at these big events, the pictures kind of suck. They're releasing like the new 85 1.2. And it's just like like a horrible, it's just like a cliche picture of like a, you know, an, an old person's face and insert whatever exotic country. Or it's like, you know, a macro shot of a flower. Or it's just like a HDR landscape shot. And I'm, not, I'm not knocking that genre, but I'm just saying like even within that genre, even though I don't do that, and I know they're trying to appeal to the masses, but, but I still know what is and isn't a good photograph. And, and honestly, it's like they don't pick even good landscape shots. They're not even good macro flower shots. They're not even good face shots or portraits, whatever, <laughs> not even good portraits. Like it's usually average to mediocre. And I don't understand it. I know some of you might say, and I've been in this position too, some of you might say like, to be fair, like, oh, you know, often they only get like one or two days to test it out. Like, yeah, they should give them more time. But honestly, like looking at these pictures, just go look, go open up Canon's website, open up Nikon's website, and just like look at some of the pictures attached to their brand new cameras and new lenses. Like honestly, really look, look at it. Like they should be at the highest possible level. And I know, again, one or two days to shoot, but really, I think you could do better than that. I know people can do better than that. I just think either they're being lazy with the photographers they're choosing, or they're not giving them enough creative freedom. But either way, just look at it. I've just always been a pet peeve of mine. Just find those pictures for these major camera companies. I feel like they should be the best in the world. And they're usually like pretty average to mediocre. And the last thing I want to talk about today about the photography industry is the hypocrisy. And specifically, I'm going to talk about the hypocrisy in photojournalism. You know, this is something that I feel like I'm removed far enough now. I can talk about these things. And yeah, yeah there's still a little bit of fear like, oh, if you say this about this person, you might not work with this camera company or you might not work with this publication. But you know what? Screw it. I mean, I just think some of this stuff's ridiculous. Some of it needs to be called out because if I don't say it, who is going to say it? Everyone's afraid. And pros are the ones that kind of know this stuff, but they're afraid to say it. So just in general, you look at some of the big awards, like World Press Awards, you just see the hypocrisy in like what's allowed for toning. You know, you see some of the big names as photographers, they're allowed to like selectively tone. They're allowed to like go deeply and do different things with the photographs that maybe a new photographer or unknown photographer can't do. And I find that quite ridiculous. It should just be like submit raw files. Or, or let everyone tone however they want. But you know, the fact that some people are allowed to do more toning than others, more color correction than others, more selective toning than others. But that's not even really what I wanted to focus on today. What I want to focus on today is a, is a photographer that you know, many people like, are afraid to talk about, but everyone in my industry, everyone in the journalism industry like, wants to talk about it, but they're afraid. But you know what, screw it. I talked about it again privately. Might as well talk about it publicly. If you guys want, I'll do a deeper episode about this. Let's see what you have to say. Try not to get too harsh. This is a very polarizing topic, but Steve McCurry, the hypocrisy in that, I just find that absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he's one of the biggest names in photography. He was always considered a photojournalist or a documentary photographer. And then there was the big scandal several years back, or what I thought should have been a big scandal, but it wasn't really where he was found out, not only to just be setting up his shots. I mean, I've worked with a lot of his fixers who have told me about these intricate setups that he's created, like hiring people, making them wear certain outfits, going to certain locations, lining up in the perfect composition so he can get the perfect shot for his Nat Geo spread. Or, But you know, he was doing commercial work, but also working for National Geographic, which is supposed to be a reputable journalism magazine. And in a lot of ways it is, but still, I still find this a big stain on their career, a big stain on their legacy, because Steve Curry was not only caught setting up images, but he was caught doing like the biggest no-no in photojournalism. He was caught cloning things out, you know, taking people out of pictures, adding things like this was, he was busted. He was caught red-handed. And, you know, if, if you don't know the whole scandal, I'll put a link to the Peter Pixel article about it. I mean, it's fan amazing. But, you know, the crazy thing is immediately after that, he just essentially just changed his bio 
to being a storyteller and then all of a sudden like that exonerated him from all these things that any other journalist, any other photojournalist would have been like excommunicated from, from the industry for. And then, you know, a lot of these shots were done for National Geographic. They were published in National Geographic. And then as far as I know, they never made a statement. Maybe they've said something, but I haven't seen anything. I found that really, really weak. I also found it really disappointing. I felt like that was a great opportunity for them to come out and say like, yeah, this is not what we're all about. We don't agree with this kind of stuff. I feel like he should have admitted fault. Nat Geo should have admitted fault, but you know, neither of them really ever owned it. And it was just quite disappointing. And some of you might say, oh, sour grapes, you're just mad. I'm not really, I'm not mad. I'm just mad about what this does to our reputation as photographers, as photojournalists. I mean, people have a hard time trusting images these days anyways. And then for him to do something like this and for a magazine that big with that reputation to not come out and say anything about it, not make a statement. Uh, yeah, I thought it was really crappy. You know, I know there's a lot of money at stake with his images and his archive, but really, I just, I found that really shitty. It's probably out of all the things I mentioned today, it's probably the most disappointing. I know a lot of you out there are big fans of Steve McCurry. This is not a personal attack on him, or it's not meant to be. It's just, this is what I believe. I felt that really stained the reputation of all of us as photojournalists. And I thought, you know, maybe we could have salvaged a little bit if he made a statement, especially if National Geographic made a statement just saying like, they don't agree with this stuff and getting rid of all those images from the archive. Again, if this happened to a smaller or less known photographer, I think that photographer would have just been done, the career would have been over, but for someone like him, it's like, no, oh, it didn't happen, change his bio and that's it. I find it weak. I'm not surprised about Steve McCurry, but I'm more surprised that National Geographic didn't come out and make a statement. If you look at a lot of other organizations you look at like sports organizations, anything that like stains the reputation of the league, they'll come out and make a statement about it. This like really stained the reputation of our industry. You know, I, th I think it really did. And for nothing to happen, no repercussions for him, no repercussions for the magazine. I found it really weak that they hid from it. And just most of all, I just found it really disappointing. Uh, so it's not stuff that annoys me, it's stuff that disappoints me, it's stuff that just angers me. So that was the biggest one, that last one is the biggest one. Again, if you guys want me to go deeper into this, or if you want to have a debate in the comment section, that's fine. I've tried this before, and people get really worked up on both sides of this. I'm happy to have an honest, fair debate about it in the comment section if you guys want, but if you get vulgar, I'll delete it. I'm not attacking him personally, I'm attacking what he did for work, I just don't agree with it. And again, I've struggled with this, I've wanted to talk about it for a long time, but you know, everyone in my industry is kind of afraid to, but... I'm not afraid anymore, I don't care, fine. If that happens, I stand by what I said. I don't agree with what he did. I don't agree with how it was handled, that's it. So anyways, those are the things that annoy me about the photography industry. I smell another episode coming soon about this because I've got a lot to say. Even though normally people that know me well, my loved ones, my family, my friends would say I'm like a pretty mellow, even keel guy, every once in a while, I get excited about a rant like this and I want to go off. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know. Let's have a debate in the comments section. Let's talk about some of these things. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, let me know what you think of the brand new setup I've got here. I'm going to be doing a lot more weekly live streams because this setup is just very convenient. So you can let me know some topics that you want me to discuss in the comments section below. Again, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to have a wonderful day.